What's up, people? Uh, Drew Adams here at Larrabee Studios, Studio A. Got a session that I got set up for Dave uh, so he can get it done in the box at his house, at his home studio, uh, Vibrant Street Studios. Basically, what I'm going to show you right now is the rundown of setting up a session uh, from, from the client to presenting it to Dave. My job is to simplify it, dumb it down, do everything I can to make it, you know, almost paint by numbers, just make it as simple as possible, all the way down to color coordinating, uh, breaking the sections down to uh, drums, music, uh, and vocals, but all subcategorized as far as vocals, lead vocals on top, which I'll show you right here. This is all, I've, I've just got finished uh, doing it, and uh, basically here's the verse lead, what I'm highlighting here and everything corresponding to it in orange. Basically the rundown is, I don't know if I already said it, but vocals on top, drums, music. That's how every session's set up. No matter how it comes to us, we set it up the same way. So it's the same thing to Dave. Okay, so lead vocals on top, boom, in orange. Any like random vocals, you know, stutter edits and vocal effects and whatnot in the same section as the lead vocals but as its own corresponding group. And then we have what is the pre-chorus here, as I'm highlighting in a lighter purple. And a lot of these, a lot of these uh, harmonies within this pre-chorus were jumbled around and whatnot. And uh, I basically put high harmonies together, mid harmonies together, anything, all these harmonies that are uh, you know two, four, six part harmonies, I put them together low with low and high with high and so forth and so on. And as far as color coordinating, this is pretty much standard. Male vocals are usually in orange, uh, females are hot pink. So we have this pre-chorus in like a light purple, uh, but hook lead and hook BGs, all corresponding things, are always in dark purple. This section here is actually like the hype up part, the tag of the song. The song is called Opera. So that's this portion of the song. So we have it from what's highlighted. That's the tag. Here's the hook. Hook vocals, all harmonies in place. Pre-chorus, all harmonies in place. And leads and random vocals. So from there, go down to the drums. Drums are always highlighted in yellow. It's always the same corresponding priority-wise as far as kick, snare, high-end perks, um, as far as cymbals and uh, hi-hats and what have you. All those are in priority, kicks first, snares, and, and so on. And then toms and anything else that's, you know, random drum-wise, it, it's at the end, it's at the bottom. And then it's all followed up by the sub, by the bass. This song actually has two different basses. Looks to be like a, uh, like a chorus bass here and a, a burst bass there. These are the synths here in hot pink. There's a lot of synths going on, and these it's all the same. It's as far as priority goes. Whatever is happening most common throughout the track gets top priority. It's uh, top of the list. So these stabs are going throughout the whole song. So they're top of the list. And this is, uh, I think this is like the four on the floor part that's pretty, pretty huge in the song. Get it? So moving on that um, so those are all the synths these these hot pink section here random effects throughout they're, they're synths so they're still with the synth section but they're just kind of random and uh, so they're at the bottom on to the string strings in dark purple dark purple or light blue depending it really is sometimes it doesn't matter but sometimes it does uh, as far as right now we're gonna stick with purple this purple thing we got going there's one section of the song which is all dubstep, so I made it an obvious orange so Dave can recognize it. And then all like random sound effects and what have you, they're at the bottom. They get mixed. They get mixed in last, and that's pretty much that's pretty much how it gets set up. Oh, also, I like to make all the inputs inactive, just because we don't we don't need any inputs unless Dave's going to use some hardware inserts at his house and he can just reactivate them or activate them. Sorry, um, by Control Option Apple, click, and it'll get all the corresponding ones, like the one twos, like 
You'll see all the one twos come back. You see, but they're all going out one and two, no inputs running. Straight Apple S. Make sure you stay on the Apple S. How I label the song when I get it from a client. I do this at the beginning. I do this when I first started this, uh, setting this up. As I immediately bump up, bump up is saving as, save as a different name. That way, if I have to ever go back to the original, <clears throat> it's, it's right from the client. There's no questions asked. Like, this is exactly what I got from you. If there's ever missing audio and whatnot like that. So, and we label the prep stage, DP prep. Save. So I got to find the, the BPMs of the song. This is at its default 120 right now. So I get the kick. Option F, get it full screen. Get it as tight as possible. Zoom in, R and T. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. I get it close as possible, arrow over, and close as possible here without obsessing over it, which I normally do. We got a uh, one bar loop going. Right? Okay. So, the vent, we can quick key it, but I'll just show you guys where to get it. Sorry, identify beat. So click one, because it's just a one bar loop that I'm trying to find out the, uh, the tempo of. Tap down to two, and hit OK. And it's telling me one, two, three, point, whatever, for human error. Got it. It's 123, and we're going to move this. Double click, one, two, three. Bam. We should be on grid. F4 for grid mode. And we're close. Not as close as I would like it, but we're close enough. I'll usually zoom in and, and fine tune, but we're cool for now. So we got the tempo, and you guys could also set markers by hitting a uh, numeric key enter. Or if you have a laptop, FN. I'm not going to go through it right now. You guys know how to marker your session. I'm going to import Dave's template now. There it is. And everything, uh, as far as this window is concerned, you want to make sure that this never says link. Um, it's not saying, it's not giving me the option now. It's grayed out because I'm going, I'm within the same drive I'm working with. If it ever says link, you're running the risk of moving your audio or moving tracks or moving any type of data rather than copying. So you want to copy and you want to make sure you maintain absolute uh, time code values always. And this section gets tricky sometimes. I'm going to do uh, none and you see how import unhighlighted itself, right? So I went to do not import. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why I w would not want to import some in the session import data window, but so make sure you re-highlight that because sometimes you, you'll be flying something in or you want to uh, import some session data and you'll, you'll do like a specific. You'll go none and then you'll just you know, pick one of these and then it'll take you off of uh, import and you get screwed. Like, why is this not working? So we got Dave's references, a David Guetta track, and this session is to be mixed in the box. But Dave's got analog gear at home that he's going to put in like the Orville, the bass, the SD330, the Procasti, so forth and so on. Um, he's also got this kick and snare chain that is a uh, in-the-box parallel compression. I'm going to click none. Like I said before, I have to in order to import this without Pro Tools bugging out on me right now, yeah, for time's sake. But I just want to get you guys showing you the, the routing, of how everything gets routed at this point. So, what I, first thing I do is I inactivate all of these Oxes. All these highlighted oxes here are what are uh, Dave's template uh, effects. So why, why we keep it inactive is he, he activates them as he goes along, and uh, that way all of them aren't taking up voices in the session. Just so we can make sure all our routing is straight. And actually right click, rename, let's do main. I'm going to set the input of this. This is a, a random bus for right now, but I'm going to label it SI. PT, and so we have this aux here, which is basically our stereo, our stereo bus, and I'm gonna label that print, and I'm gonna make this output of this 
SIPT and set this to this print. So I have the master controlling the input of what goes here, this input, and then this aux working as our stereo bus going into our print track so we can record and make these uh, solo safe. Apple left click, sorry. Put the input on. And uh, this is basically so we can record our passes, our master passes, our, uh, our main passes, instrumentals, acapellas, and stems. And this has to be color coordinated, baby blue. Like I said, these are always, always the same. This is Dave's reference tracks. Dave likes to listen to, uh, like to listen to songs that he likes, just to get a feel for stuff, and also to make sure that he's competing volume-wise and gain staging. And you know, there's a lot of reasons to keep a reference uh, track while you're mixing, so it's it's best. He recommends it for me while I'm starting out and everything like that. So it's a good thing, and also a David Guetta track here because this is a dance tune, and you want to make sure that you're doing as good if not beating it every time so keep it as a reference so as you can see in Dave's template all his effects are already routed to all effects as you can see what I'm pointing at right now not what I'm actually highlighting because I gotta move these this is uh, what I'm moving now is Dave's kick chain and snare chain within Pro Tools which is pretty accurate to his uh, <clears throat> his analog kick chain which is DBX to the uh, to the pull tech. So we'll just keep this here just in case he wants to use it. He doesn't use it every time, but just in case he wants to, he's got the option. Cool. From here down, they're all going to all effects. This is where everything's going to as far as our in the box routing. So make you guys active because we're gonna need you and all going to the uh I'll show you real quick. All going to this print input here via you know master print the track is controlling it boom uh, I gotta make the inputs all corresponding what I'm doing right now is shift option Apple I'm holding it down I could probably let go now but um, basically if you look I made them all uh, corresponding not the same so 13 14 15 16 blah 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 but I have to name these so rename it's gonna be Vox I mean drums. It's important to label everything because you lose track when you deal with so many tracks. Music and then all effects. Sometimes we do uh, Dave effects and client effects. We'll have, a, we'll have the all effects thing separated out into two different ones, but well, this will work for now. Now we got to route everything so it, it makes sense and it goes from this process here, the red tracks, to this process here. Right now, I'm going to put all the all the vocals routing through this particular aux here. It says all vox. Vox is short for vocals. Highlight all the vocals, holding shift option, and running this through my vox bus. So all those are running through the vox aux up there. All of these drums run through the drums aux. Sometimes we... we uh, put the bass with the drums, sometimes we don't. Since there's two basses and it's kind of instrumental, I'm putting it with the music. So I'm highlighting all the music, even this dubstep section, and I'm routing that to the music buses. So music, drums, vocals, effects. Effects, music, drums, vocals. If Drew did his job, we should be able to hear and see these meters moving because everything should be routed from these oxes to this stereo bus. Cool. There we go. Cool. At this point, in order to avoid any playback errors, um, best thing to do is strip your silence. Rather than going in and fine tuning and, and, and fading everything, I'll still put fades on, on all the vocals, but this will work for now. You can make me look cool by editing this. Alright, so you want to change your threshold to make 
about like 90 something because you, you don't want to cut off too much. And you can, you can gauge it by looking at the screen. You can see where these uh, meters are moving to. So the duration, region start pad, you see it moving. You want to be careful because you don't want to cut anything off. And make it longer there. So hold your mouse here and then scroll up and down with P and semicolon and click away. Taking away minor details that would take me an extra, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. That's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, so happy mixing, y'all.